Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of the On Fire B2B podcast, podcast where we take business owners and CEOs in the B2B space. Six questions, nine minutes, because the best know when to be concise and when to end. And let's get to it. Question number one in a couple sentences. Who are you and what do you do? Hey, Bob. Thanks for having me. I am Jen Hamrick, founder of Story Social Media, and I work with companies to share their stories using social media to build and connect with their communities. Love it. Love it. Question number two, what is the best thing about working with businesses? I believe the best part of working with businesses is the relationships that you create and build. It's a great big world out there and technology today just helps us to bring it all together. And we're able to meet and connect with people who we may not have otherwise and getting to work with various people, getting to know people who have more knowledge than we do in various areas only benefits and grows us when we're willing to learn. There's always something to learn. There's always something to learn. Question number three, I'm hearing from other top executives that getting from decision makers is a challenge. What are your thoughts? I don't necessarily think that's always the case. Again, um, it's about networking. It's about relationships. And back in the day, we would have to make phone calls, literally by telephones that still had cords attached to them or send a letter by mail and hope it was open before it was thrown in the trash. Um, And some people, bless their hearts, even had to physically go knocking on doors. And those methods methods weren't always um, simple to get someone's attention. Unlike today, you can follow or connect with key players of companies across social, especially on LinkedIn. And they see your activity, they see your posts, you engage with theirs and it can quickly crack open a door to connect. It can, it can. Question number four, what advice do you share with other companies working in the B2B industry? Go. Be authentic. No one wants to be bombarded with sales pitches. And just like the emails that you send to your list, to your community, shouldn't be 100% salesy. Neither should your posts and DMs on social. It's a turnoff and it will quickly cause someone to unfollow. Um, As a matter of fact, I don't believe that you should try to sell anything in a DM until those no like and trust factors have been achieved. And, you know, how, how to grow or earn your credibility with with people is um obviously you know through your content they want to see that um you know what you're talking about and you know speak to to their pain points you know you know your ideal customer avatar you want to be you need to serve them obviously um again think of their pain points speak to their pain points give them what they want and sell them what they need. Absolutely there. It's actually funny when you say don't sell in DMs until that factor is built. I'm doing a beta program for one of my programs right now. And I've been sending, you know, people been asking about it. I says, okay, I'm about to send you a pitch email. I will not be offended if you say no. Mm -hmm. Because again, if you don't want to hear about it, I don't get next. You know, that part there. So totally agree with that there. Yeah, that's really helpful and not to become a used car salesperson. Yeah. (laughs) And don't have the car popped up. This is not acceptable. Right. There we go. Let me put that back. Let me fix that real quick so I don't embarrass myself anymore there. So let's get to question number five. What other top CEOs and business owners in the B2B industry, like yourself, would you like to acknowledge as a leader and should be a guest in my podcast? I think you would enjoy talking with Jessica Stansberry. Uh, She is fun. She is smart, which is always a great combination for success. And if you could nail him down, James Wedmore. He is an out-of-the-box thinker, a forward thinker, and I think he's a great example for business owners today. I'll look them both up when we're done here. Let's get to question number six. I need to let you know, Jen, this is the most important question of the podcast. No pressure. No pressure whatsoever. Jen, tell me about your first time. Your first sale. (laughs) That is a funny story. Um... My business background, like many, was with brick and mortars. I bought, built, sold um, until the early 2000s. And there was some overlap and I started a blog. Um, this was prior to Google ads, right? So, and enter Twitter. Uh, and I think it was like 2007, 2008. 
I remember my dad saying, you've got to get on Twitter. And I thought it was the dumbest thing ever. Like we're supposed to communicate with 120 characters. Okay. Um, so again, I thought it was dumb until I didn't. And then I started seeing quickly started seeing the possibilities again of connections. And, um, I started having friends and colleagues ask me, you know, how, um, cause obviously I pivoted and started thinking business wise and um, had friends and colleagues start asking me, you know, things they should do and um, whatever. And I started telling them slash teaching them how to use it. And a couple of them were like, you got to start charging for this. And so I did. And my first customer, as far as social media management, came from a conversation in the Twitter DMs. And that's how Story Social Media was birthed. And uh, the rest is history. Love it. I love how basically you don't want to go on Twitter. You did and you made money out of it. That's the I most did. important thing there. So, yeah. Jen, you now have three minutes and four seconds left. We have some time for promo. You can ask me a question. You can talk about the weather, or since the best know wouldn't be concise and when to end, we can end early. Go. Okay. okay. Um, I'm going to take a second and then I have a question for you. Sure. Um, I have a lot going on. <laughs> In addition to the story of social media, I also have uh, the most comprehensive report on the American homeschool market at homeschooldata.com. And at the end of the day, my heart is for women. No offense to all you men out there, taken. but I never want a woman to feel stuck, whether it's in a financial situation or a dead end job or simply just a rut in life. I mean, so easily, um, and I can speak from experience, you know, so easily we just feel like this, you know, motherhood is, can feel suffocating and it's like, oh my God, is there anything else out there? And our kids are wonderful. And, um, it, sometimes, you know, women just need encouragement and a push, right? To to do what they're meant to do, um, in addition to the journey of motherhood. And so um, I created the Business Lady Club. And because I believe in today's world, the opportunity, the, today's digital world, the opportunities are endless. And this is a group uh, for women who want to start a business online or they have one, but want to obviously grow it. And they can find us, uh, actually, a Facebook group called Business Lady Club. Perfect. You have one minute and 26 seconds left. What else? Who, who is your dream person to get on your podcast? You know, here's the funny thing. My dream person is someone who becomes a client afterwards. Because everyone talks about, everyone who talks, like, after in the network and, like, getting to know them, everyone talks about, oh, you can have these big names on the podcast. Here's a little trick. Those big names don't promote you. Correct. So it's just kind of like, and again, in my attitude is like, if I had Grant Cardone on my podcast and people are like, I like you more just because you had Grant Cardone, Gary Vee, and it's not the name, but it's based, you know, it's that right. part there. I'm right. kind of like, okay, I, I, you know, doesn't, doesn't do anything for me there. And I have to wonder about the person who goes, oh, you've had this super big name on. I want to know more about you. Right. That's just, that's who's my made, who, second question real fast. Who, who is someone who's made a huge impression on you business wise? I think the uh, big impression on me business-wise, I'd probably say Kathy Hadley. Uh, she was my previous coach and she passed away, but she was just, we, the, I've had other coaches. It's always been a little bit like this, but we're just on point together. Um, after her coaching, we're going to go build her group coaching program, but sadly she passed away, but she was probably the one that had the biggest impact on me. I love that. I love there that. you go. You pulled it off with 12 seconds awesome. to spare. Six, <laughs> nine minutes because the best know when to be concise and when to end. Right. Your website, say it. Story social media. And the description is magic. There we go. Mm -hmm. Jen, thank you so much for being on. I appreciate you, Bob. Thanks. And you're welcome. And for everyone else watching or listening, make sure you check out more episodes of the On Fire B2B podcast. I am Bob Clark. You all have a wonderful day. I will talk to you later. Bye.